sending your hips back and resting your upper body down. A lot of times when we have that upper back tightness as moms, it can be because we're doing a lot of forward stuff with a phone or with caregiving. Um, or it can also be because we've gotten into that fight or flight breath where we're breathing a lot into our shoulders. So in child's pose, really focus on sending your breath into your back ribs and side ribs, really feeling the three-dimensional expansion through your lower back, feeling as you inhale, feel your breath go all the way into your seat bones. As you inhale, your seat bones spread. As you inhale, your tailbone extends or lifts. As you inhale, your side ribs go to the sides and your back ribs go up toward the sky. Thinking about softening through the shoulders, through the neck. And using your breath as a way to massage the lower back muscles that tend to get tight. And on your next inhalation, coming into hands and knees. Grabbing a pillow that's nearby, it can be a yoga block or a pillow, and giving it a nice little squeeze, and drawing that right femur into the socket. So doing those iliacus pullbacks, inhale to release, feeling the breath go into the back ribs and side ribs, exhale and squeeze the pillow, and exhale that left femur into the socket. Inhale to release. Exhale, squeeze your pillow and draw the right femur into the socket. So this is a small movement. We're just drawing that femur into the socket with your breath. Inhale to release. Exhale, let's do the left side. It's not a shift or a lean. It's just a small movement where you should feel this in the lower abdominals, in the adductor or inner thigh and in the front of the hip, you also might feel a stretch in the back of the hip, particularly if you have a little tightness around your piriformis or uh, rear pelvic floor. This is sometimes a really useful pelvic reset if you're feeling like you're off or if you're really tight in your hips and buttocks. Squeeze and draw in. Really getting to that last of that exhale so that you really feel those lower abdominals. Okay, pause in the middle. Here you're going to squeeze your block or your pillow, engage the lower abdominals from the bottom up, and bring the left fingertips to the opposite wall. So really finding those inner thigh muscles, those adductors, lengthening the spine, from the top of the head through the tailbone, sending the shoulder blade away from the neck. Almost pressing the back of the neck up toward your ceiling. Good, inhale to release. Take one more big inhale, really getting the air into your back ribs and side ribs and exhale, squeeze your pillow. Zip up your abdominals, thinking about squeezing out around your urethra all the way through your belly button, finally to the top of the rib cage. Keep that engagement as you extend your right fingertips toward the opposite wall. Spine is long. Neck is neutral, so you might find you're pressing the back of the head toward the ceiling. Fingertips glide toward the opposite wall as the shoulder sets down into the socket. Good, and then release. Inhale the left fingertips. This time you're gonna squeeze the pillow to find your adductors. You can stay here or you can extend your right heel to the opposite wall. So if you did that, your pillow probably fell down and you can move it away. 
staying here or bringing the left hand out and the right leg out. Feeling this in your core and also in the side glute muscle and of course your shoulder. Inhale them back to the opposite walls and exhale them down. Placing that right knee down and big inhale, feeling the back ribs, side ribs moving. Exhale, zipping up from the urethra to the belly button, finally to the rib cage, keeping your core engagement and extending the opposite heel and the opposite arm. Finding that long line between the fingertips and the heel. Making sure you don't have that left hip lifted. It's, it's nice and in alignment with the right hip. Chin is tuck and neck is long. If you want, you can bring them out to the side so the right hand goes to the right and the left heel goes to the left. Working those hip abductors a little bit. Bringing them forward and then down. Bringing that left hand to the left shoulder or up overhead. Feeling that nice mid back opener. Lengthening the back of the neck here as well. Firing that balance between the grounding through the right hand and the lengthening through the left fingertips. Good, and exhale that left hand through, through the arm and the leg, releasing the shoulder and the head down. Opening up that shoulder blade and then pressing up. The right hand now comes to the right shoulder Neck is long. Maybe extend the right fingertips up to the sky. Shoulder blades release from the ears. Noticing how a lot of times we want to kind of crane our neck back and instead try to find a little length through the neck. Good, and then that right hand comes through to thread the needle, setting the head and the shoulder down, opening that shoulder blade. You also might feel a really nice stretch through the hips. Good, and then coming back to hands and knees. On your next inhale, you're gonna rise into your knees, find that tall kneeling position. Take a nice big 360 inhale, feeling the rib cage open like an umbrella opens. On your exhale, you're gonna zip up, engaging from your urethra to the lower abdominals, belly button, and finally to the rib cage. And keep your brace as you extend your left foot out to the, sky, to the side. Pressing that left foot, the side of that left foot into the ground. Pressing the right to kind of fire up those inner thighs. Kind of helping these inner thigh adductor muscles so they're active, they're pressing, they're grounding, and you're zipping through here. You can stay here. This should feel like you're getting a good workout, or you can have your arms rise overhead. If you had your arms rise overhead, make sure you didn't rib flare. Make sure you kept your bottom to top engagement and the rib bowl on top of the pelvic bowl as your arms rose. You can stay here, or you can tip over for a little teapot. We're still zipped up from the bottom. We're still nice and active through the adductors, grounding into the ground. Chin is almost tucked, but really thinking about lengthening, making a long line from the top of the head through that left foot. Should feel like a good challenge. Inhale, come back up. Exhale. Taking a nice opener through the rib cage over to the left. We get so tight in our rib cage in pregnancy and postpartum and in modern life, really. 
It's a great way to open up and find more of that side breath. Inhale to rise, taking a nice big 360 inhale. Exhale, zipping from the bottom. And if you want, you can take the option for your little teapot. Grounding through the floor, pressing that left foot down into the ground, feeling the strength from the adductors, the lower abdominals. Breathing under that brace, that muscular brace we, we created, but you're still breathing. It's just a little bit more shallow. Inhale to come up and exhale, sliding that left hand down and opening the rib cage. Now we're letting go of that abdominal brace, really lengthening through the side ribs, really lengthening through that side rib cage, finding a mushy belly. Good, inhale to rise. Exhale, zipping up and taking the teapot as an option. You don't have to take the option though. Feeling that core working and now we're breathing under the brace. So this is a core exercise. Good, and then rising. And let's take a seat down and stretch forward. Get a little stretch through that left hamstring and through that right hip. A lot of times when we have back pain or hip pain, it's really because we're tight through your hamstrings or through your hips, and it's a lot of pulling through your back and buttocks. So hip mobility is often really useful. Pressing through that left leg and rising up. All right, and then let's bring that left knee in. You can take any shakeouts that you need. Now we're gonna send that right leg out. The right leg is extended, foot is straight, almost like you're wearing a ski. If your knee is uncomfortable, feel free to put the pillow under it. And that foot is gonna ground down. Now, if you're feeling a little crampy in your hip, it's usually just because your hip is a little bit weak, especially in this position, because it's in a short position. So you can make this more comfortable if you need to bend the knee a little bit, or if you need to take any shakeouts. But typically when we get crampy, it's because we're weak in that position. It's a short, weak muscle. So here we're gonna ground through the ground, ground through and rise to the top of the head, zip up like a zipper is going up to our rib cage, and the arms can come overhead, but they don't have to. You can take your teapot option to feel this and your core. Breathing under the brace. Good, rise and bringing the right hand down, left over to stretch the rib cage. Inhale, both arms up, zip up, staying here. So you should feel this working your core. This is an option, but it, you don't have to take that option. Pressing and lengthening. Pressing and lengthening. Good, and exhale, let's take the hip down for a little stretch. So we're getting a little hamstring adductor stretch on the right and some nice hip stretch on the left. Good, inhale to rise. Exhale, zipping up from the bottom, finding your muscular brace, staying here, taking the option if you want it. So you really feel like, oh, I have some adductors or I have some inner thighs. A lot of times they kind of get shut down after pregnancy and they need a little help waking up again. Good, and exhale, right hand to the knee and left is gonna go over. Good. 
All right, and then let's come back to hands and knees. And then let's send the hips into a little child's pose again. Finding that breath going into the lower back, into the side ribs, feeling that umbrella breath. Feel free to play around with your knees if they need to get a little bit more separated. In child's pose, it's often a lot easier to find that umbrella breath. So that's like when you open an umbrella, the whole circle opens. All right, and then let's come back onto hands and knees. Take a nice 360 breath. Exhale, zipping up from the bottom, found your core, flip the toes and lift the, the knees into a bear position. Neck is long, shoulders are away from the ears. And you should feel this in your front pelvic floor and in your lower abdominals. Good, and then straighten the legs and take it into a nice downward dog. Pedaling the ankles. Hips are gonna really rise toward the ceiling, but knees can bend. Heels are gonna glide to the, to the ground. And let's bring that left knee up toward the chest. Really finding those lower abdominals as they're bringing it through. Keep kissing that knee forward, 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 and then let's bring it through. So now we're in that tall kneeling position. Spine is long, you can stay tall or you can bring the knee down. Exhale into a cat. Good, and inhale into a lunge cow. Inhale into cat. and bring into cow. Exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And you can move with your own breath through this sequence for just a few more movements. And then pause as your knee comes over the ankle and bring the left hand up to the ceiling. Really feeling this twist in your, um, in your hips and in your mid back. Very good, very good. Good, and then bringing that left hand down, lifting the knee, spiraling that right ankle down and then windmill the arms up into warrior. So here the left foot is forward, the right foot is back, imagining spiraling out of the, of the inner thighs. It's gonna activate your glutes. The arms can come here, knee is on top of your ankle, flip the fingers up, and then bring them down. And notice how that turned on your shoulders. Good, flipping that left hand and rising it over for Peaceful Warrior. Shoulder blade releases down. Finding a little length in the neck. The gaze can be down at the right foot or up at the left hand. And then coming back into warrior two. Good, and then spiraling the ankle so that it's nice and lifted. Tailbone drops or releases down to the ground. Spine lengthens. So feeling that balance between the grounding through the tailbone and the lengthening through the top of the head and find that connection, almost like you're scissoring your feet together. Kind of work on activating those two parts of the legs. Notice how that turns on your core. 
From here, shift the weight forward into a modified warrior three. You're gonna feel this in that left glute. You can, if you want, inch that foot up and begin to lift it into warrior three. Feeling this in the left glute, spine is long. So whether your leg is lifted or not, on your next exhale, you're gonna bring that knee in, bring it up, 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 grounding through the foot, lengthening through the top of the head, and then release it down. Take a nice big inhale, exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees as much as you need to. Inhale to a flat back, hands press into the shins, shoulder blades come together. Exhale to forward fold. Let's head back into hands and knees. Taking a nice big 360 inhale. Exhale, zipping up from the bottom. Toes are gonna flip under and rise into your bare position. Feeling this in your lower abdominals for sure. Good, and then use your abdominals to draw you up, up, up to the sky and find that down dog position. Pressing into the hands, gliding the hips up, taking whatever knee bend you need to. Now we're gonna inhale that right knee forward through toward our chest. Really feel your lower abdominals bringing it up, 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 up. When you feel like you can go no farther, then step it through. Now we're in that tall lunge. You can release the knee down if you want and taking that cat cow. So exhaling into your angry cat stretch, inhaling into your cow, lifting the heart, lifting the chest and moving with your own breath. Pausing when your knee is over your ankle. Lifting the knee and bringing the right hand to the right shoulder and then later up to the sky. Spine is long, shoulders are away from the ears. Bringing that right hand down. Then bringing the left side foot down, grounding through that foot, and windmilling the arms up into your warrior two. Here we are in warrior two. The legs are spiraling away from each other to turn on those outer glutes. You can try that palms up, palms down trick just to activate your shoulder girdle a bit. Inhale. Rising that right hand up, sliding the left hand down the left leg for a peaceful warrior. Even here, our legs are spiraling away from each other to activate those outer glutes. The gaze can be at that left toe or it can be up at the left hand or the right hand whatever feels comfortable for you. Right, and then rising, coming forward to 
your tall or high lunge. Your tailbone is going to release down, finding that balance between the grounding through the tailbone and the lengthening through the top of the head and arms rise. All right, let's take it into that forward warrior three, bringing the weight forward, finding that right glute come alive. You can stay here. This is hard. Um, or you can lift the left foot just an inch, a couple inches, or all the way into warrior three. It's fine to lose your balance. That happens. Some days are great and some days are all over the place. Gaze is down. Shoulders are away from the ears. And on your next exhale, you're going to draw your knee in, starting with the lower abdominals, bringing that knee up, 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 up. Really feeling that core. When you can't hold it any longer, you can release it down. And then let's just take a few easy sways. Just to kind of release any tension through the upper body. The feet are going to be a little bit out and we're going to sit down into our seated squat. Pressing the knees into the ankle or into the knees, pressing the elbows into the knees. <laughs> Spine is long. Bring that right hand down and the left hand up to the ceiling. And then hands come back to the heart center. Left hand comes down, right hand goes up. Shoulder blades all the while are finding a little space away from the neck. And the right hand comes down. And then we're gonna press through the heels, find the base of the seat, those glutes, and have them help you rise. Feeling like it came from this stuff. Inhale, separating the seat bones, letting the tailbone lift and coming into your deep squat posture. The right hand comes down and the left arm goes up. Shoulder blade glides away from the ears. Bringing the left hand down, placing it down on the ground, and exhaling the right fingertips up. Bringing that right hand down, pressing the hands together, pressing into the heels, and letting this power, the base of your seat, power you up. Good. Shift the weight to the left foot, Right, raise up that right knee. Place the ankle on top of the thigh and sit down into a little seated pigeon. We're creating space in that right glute as well as strengthening the standing leg. Press the hands together. Let your trunk kind of rise out of the bowl of the pelvis and sink a little deeper on your exhale. As you inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, sink a millimeter deeper. Good, inhale to rise, unfold that leg, and take any wiggles you need to. All right, now we're gonna shift the weight to the left leg, Raise up that right knee, set that knee on top, or the ankle on top of the thigh, and come down into a chair. So now you should feel the working leg, that left leg. Did we just do this leg? We might have just done this leg. All right, we're going to stand on the right leg and cross the left one over. If you did one, make sure to do the other. On your inhale, think about lengthening the spine and exhale. 
sitting down into a deeper squat. Inhale, lengthening, and exhale into a deeper squat. Good. Pressing into that foot and coming up. Taking any wiggles you need to. All right, then shifting the weight to the left foot, taking the um, right foot into the right hand. You can stay here and press that foot into the hand, or you can, as you press, allow it to open the front of your body and take this into dancer pose. Try to the side. So you're here and you can take this forward as much as feels good in your body. Hips stay nice and level. This is a great strengthener for the left leg and a great lengthener through the front body. We get so tight in our quad and our chest. All right, and then coming up, shaking it out, shifting the weight to the right leg and bringing the left foot in, pressing that foot into the hand and the hand into the foot here or tipping, tipping forward as much as you would like. Really allowing that foot to press into the hand which opens the chest and the hand to press into the foot to open the quad. Good. And then come back up. Inhale the arms up. Find a nice wide-legged stance. Exhale the hands down. Bend into the right knee. And come into a wide legged position. This is a great hip opener. No knee pain is allowed. So if this bothers you, just stay in the range that feels good. On your next inhale, press into the heel, press into the foot and rise. And inhale, coming into the left side, taking that deep hip opener on the left. Good, inhale, coming back into your V for fold. And let's make our way to our backs. Here on your back, take a nice big inhale, exhale, zip up, keeping those muscles nice and working, lift the left knee up and release it down and then uh, lift the left one and release it down and we're going to march, so getting your muscular brace and then adding the march. You want to really feel that bottom to top zipper going. And if you feel like you'd like more challenge, you can add also moving the opposite arm and the opposite knee. Starting to be a little bit more direct and work on our core. Good. Keeping the abdominal brace going, right, raise the right toes up to the sky. So we still have our zipper going, we still have our brace working, and we're going to inhale the leg up and exhale it around. Inhale it up and exhale it around. Inhale up, exhale. Inhale that left foot up and exhale it around. So we're doing big circles here. 
making your circles as big as you can without any spinal movement. So keeping that spine nice and long and strong. Good, and then inhale that, that toe um, toward your nose and then release it down. On your next exhale, you're gonna zip up again. Really feeling that bottom to top and then rise the left toes up. Inhale them up toward your nose and exhale around. Inhale in and up and exhale around. Inhale and exhale. Your circle should be as, as um, large as you can have it without any spinal move, move, movement and without any like popping in your hip or your hip flexor. So that could be just really tiny one inch circles or it could mean that you're really going into quite a big circle. But it's really quality over quantity. So really trying to be honest about feeling that good quality of movement. All right, inhale those, those, the toe up, 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 and then exhale and release it down. Inhale that right knee to the chest and give it a nice little hug. Bringing that, that right knee up toward the armpit. And then set the ankle on top of the knee and give the left leg a little hug. You can take any kind of moves that feel good if you want to rock side to side or move this way and that way. Whatever moves kind of feel good for you. Good, keeping that knee crossed, then allowing both of those legs to, to go over to the floor on the left and the upper body go over to the right for a little spinal twist. twisting and bring that right foot down and draw that left knee to the chest giving it a little hug releasing the lower back and then the left knee toward the armpit good and then bringing that left foot on top